Nikolai batteries are a real game changer when it comes to DIY solar. One of the reasons they're a huge game changer when it comes to DIY solar is they're virtually indestructible. I personally have not actually spoke to anyone that's killed a set of these batteries. I've spoken to lots of people that have owned them, installed them, um, they've got a really good history. So do some research and have a look of the history of them. They were used in the you know, third wire, it's actually called the third line in the, in the London Underground. They've used in submarines over the years. They've been used in lots of heavy industrial products. In Australia, Australia is actually the largest installer of nickel iron batteries in the world. And they're used in all our mining sites. So the mining companies use them for, for backups and for power and all that sort of stuff. So have a look into the history of them. They weren't actually invented by Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison perfected the nickel iron technology. And he's famous for a nickel iron. And it's actually called the Edison cell. So this would be called the Edison cell, the knife cell, or a nickel iron cell. The reason they're so amazing is the way everything happens with inside them. A lead acid battery, for example, is actually designed to decay to give you energy. Where the nickel iron batteries, they've got two plates, a negative plate and a positive plate. And what happens is the chemical reaction actually happens, the electricity within that battery, that DC current, all converted through the, the chemi chemistry and through the water. The water is actually an alkaline based water, it's distilled water, KOH which is potassium hydroxide and if you're in a cooler climate, we, we run lithium in them, a small percentage of lithium hydroxide in them, it's actually helped the batteries when they're in, in cooler climates. So it's pretty simple that the chemistry within inside them is all alkaline based. So it all happens in the water. What happens with these batteries is you can't undercharge them, you can't overcharge them. The reason they haven't been so popular is they actually don't work with standard inverters, solar charge controllers. Most solar charge controllers worldwide are designed to made for run lead acid batteries because it's been the most popular lead acid battery. You can run these on a standard charge controller. There's just some tricky things you're required to do depending on your voltages, which we cover in our bonus videos. They can be overcharged. What happens with you when you overcharge them? It's pretty simple. They just use more electrolyte. You have a look. So you fill them up with the electrolytes, and when you overcharge them, they call they gas off more. So the more you use them, the more they're going to gas off. So if you overcharge them and overrun them hard, what will happen is you actually will use more of your distilled water. So you're going to require to top it up with distilled water more. If you run them low, if you did that too many times, there's probably a potential that's going to affect the plates with the electricity creating it with the plates creating electricity without having the water on them, so it's important to keep them topped up. They are virtually an indestructible battery. Compared to a lead acid battery, you can actually cycle them at about 80%. So when comparing them to a lead acid battery when you're buying, if you're buying 10 kilowatt hours of nickel iron batteries and 10 kilowatt hours of lead acid battery, with a nickel iron battery, you're actually getting eight usable kilowatt hours. And with a lead acid battery, you're only getting three usable kilowatt hours. Now, we, we've been living on these things for 12 months as of shooting this video, and I've been really, really impressed. Some days we put out more energy that went, that went into them, and it's like, how do you explain that? So, I really love this technology. They're a 1.2 volt cell, and they're really going to change the, the DIY industry because they're such an easy battery to work with once you understand um, how they work. And they're completely serviceable. So after a few years, every five years they recommend to change the electrolyte in them. You pretty much fill them up with distilled water, give them a shake, and get rid of the any contaminants. It's actually one of the biggest problems with nickel iron batteries is the contaminants in them. They um, get contaminated. Where, where they're welded on the cheaper plates, The where the welds happen is the metals break down and contaminate the plates, which is easy to fix when you shake them and clean them and get out those contaminants out of the water. The downsides to nickel iron batteries, they do off hydrogen gas, so it's important that they are in an area where they can vent off. Uh, we have ours behind the battery in the brick, brick wall over here, behind in the middle of our house, so it's important that they can gas off and just get that gas out so it doesn't build up somewhere. And if you do some research, have a look on the internet, what people say about them is that they're they lose charge quite quickly. Um, and the research we've done and we use them here, if you leave them over a month, they will go flat, they'll discharge. So after 30 days, if you've left them sitting around, they'll discharge and they'll have no charge in them. Where a lithium battery or a lead acid battery, 
you can sit around for about a brand new lead acid battery you can sit around for about 12 months and it won't lose charge a lithium battery once it's charged it won't lose charge unless it's out yes they do lose charge if you leave them for a month in a renewable energy system though hopefully you've always got sun or wind or whatever power that you're going to go into them all the time so unless you're going to leave them around completely for a month they're not going to discharge if there's energy going into them all the time Another thing that they say about them is it takes more to charge them than a lead acid battery, which is true. And the way I like to explain it, understand it this way. If you've got 10 solar panels on your roof to charge your lead acid batteries, if you buy a set of nickel iron batteries, what you're going to require to cover that loss is an extra two solar panels that it requires to take to charge these. They also, because of the technology and the way that it's set up, it actually takes a period of time to run them in. So a lot of people that have tested them in the past, they grab a brand new set of batteries and they test them. And a brand new set of batteries is very different. I know when we installed ours, it was about 40 days before they started working properly of charging them every day, cycling them every night, charging them, cycling them until they really started to hold charge. So there's, there's lots of stuff around the internet there that says they're a terrible battery. And when they're brand new, they are. They, they take a lot to get them charged and, and, and to wear them in, basically. It's like running in a new engine, and, and these batteries are no different. You actually run them in, so they actually get better and better and better over time. Another really good thing about lead acid batteries, which is amazing, is you can always add to them. If you've got lead acid batteries or lithium batteries, and you're using that battery and siphoning it and wearing it out, over a period of time, if you add another battery to lead acid, for example, your new battery will never get fully charged because the lead acid battery will not always charge up to the full peak over time as it wears out. And then, you know, your newer battery is not going to get the fuller charge, so it's going to quickly wear down to the way the old lead acid battery was and get to those same voltages. Well, with the nickel iron battery, you can buy, depending on your voltage, let's just say you do a 12 volt system, you can buy one kilowatt hours of storage. You know, 12 months later, you get a bit more money bang, you add another set of batteries and add more and more batteries as your family grow. And that's what we've done as a family. We purchased 15 kilowatt hours of usable storage. And over time, we're gonna upgrade our system. We're gonna add another 10 batteries and we're gonna add, we're gonna end up with 30 kilowatt hours of usable storage here in our house. As our family grows, we have children over time. And that's an amazing thing with this technology. You can just keep adding kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour of storage. So. That there makes them really appealing because you can install a system by having the grid as a backup. And for example, you could just run all your lights and light loads off a kilowatt hour of storage, get a small system in place, and over time keep adding and adding kilowatt hours to the bank, and you're not going to ruin the batteries because the more you use them, the better they get. That's the basic of nickel iron batteries. In our bonus videos, we're going to cover some really in-depth charging and how to really get the most out of them and how to use a standard charge controller on these batteries. There is only a few charge controllers that you can use. We highly recommend the Midnight if you are going to run nickel ion batteries. If you get a Midnight and 10 nickel ion batteries for a 12 volt system, you'll get away with it. Um, it's also another battery technology which you don't require to run a charge controller. You can get away with it. And that all comes down to selecting the right solar panels and the right battery voltages. If you get the right solar panels with the right battery voltages, you can get rid of the solar charge controller, which saves you money, but also it saves embodied energy. The biggest thing that goes wrong with these systems, in a 25 year period, if you look at a 25 year period, you've got your nickel iron batteries, they're gonna last you 25 years. Your solar panels, they will last you 25 years. The problems are gonna be your inverters and your solar charge controllers. So with this technology, you can get it to a situation where the right voltages with the panels and the right voltages with your batteries, you don't require a solar charge controller, which we'll run through in our bonus features. So you get a really good understanding of how you can get rid of a solar charge controller. Myself, personally, I would always run one. They just make it easier to deal with and wire things up and there's fail safes and stuff in them. Uh, and you can get away without having one. So they're a really great technology and I truly believe that this technology is going to change DIY solar forever.